Welcome to Good Choice Preservation. This session is an overview and introduction to preservation. I know that many of you are familiar with the REO and preservation business, and some of you have been in the field for some time now. But the purpose of this presentation is to get you familiar with the expectations and standards for GCP. Let's start by defining what the preservation and REO business really is. The preservation industry is responsible for managing homes that are owned by the bank but have been abandoned by the person holding the loan. And the REO industry is responsible for managing homes that have been fully foreclosed on by the banks and government agencies. REO work involves preparing the homes for sale. So we have two things happening in the business. We have properties that are needing to be preserved and properties that we need to get ready to sell. So properties that we are preserving are on the pre-sale side of the business and properties that we are getting ready to sell are on the post-sale side of the business. Pre-sale work involves all work that is ordered when the home is left vacant by the owner. This happens before and during the official foreclosure by the bank. So when our client orders us to do pre-sale preservation work, the bank has not actually foreclosed on the property itself and the person holding the mortgage, or the homeowner himself, actually still owns the house. Post-sale work involves all work that is ordered after the home has gone through the foreclosure process. Working with HUD and REO brokers is a common occurrence when dealing with post-sale properties. In a post-sale or REO scenario, the bank or the government agency actually owns the house at this point and the owner has been foreclosed on. It is very important to understand that much of what we do here at GCP is pre-sale work and that most of our clients that we have give us this pre-sale work. Some of you may have backgrounds in the industry doing a lot of work for HUD or doing a lot of work for REO brokers or clients that just specifically have post-sale work, but what you have to understand is that GCP has mostly pre-sale work. This is very important because you need to know and understand the scope and expectations for the pre-sale work and it's equally important that you set your own expectations and standards for this type of pre-sale work. I say that because vendors sign up with GCP and they think that they're going to replace flooring and cabinets and paint houses and do this type of work, but it's really not the case because most of GCP's work is pre-sale. That's not to say that our clients never do that type of work, but it is not the norm and it should not be the expectation for everyday work. Documentation is the most important aspect of this type of work. Documents include a property condition report, or a PCR, verified conveyance condition report, or ICC, damage reports, bid and eyeball estimates, and photo documentation. We will get into the details of these reports further on in your training, but it is important to understand that these documents will be required for every type of job you do. Some jobs might require only one report, and some jobs might require all these reports. So why are we out at the property before the bank fully owns it? The bank hires an inspection company to determine occupancy. Once the bank receives word that the property is vacant, they send a company like GCP out to the property to complete work. So let's review why we're at the property in a pre-sale situation. First, we are preserving the property for the bank what this means is we are keeping it from going into disrepair any further than it might already be. Next, the bank wants to keep the property out of code violation with the city or county. Having a code violation on a property is very costly for the bank and they want to do everything they can to avoid this. The bank wants to protect its asset by preserving the property while it goes through the foreclosure process. When the bank finally gets ready to sell the property, they want to have something that's valuable to sell. One of the main reasons we're at the property is because the bank needs to know what damages and things are at the property. Because many times the bank can be reimbursed by an insurance policy for vandalism, neglect, theft, or damages. The bank needs to know what's at the property. Like what sort of things could they be liable for? Like a pool that kids could fall in, or glass on the ground that kids could be cut up by, or other things of this nature. I referred to this earlier, but I want to bring it up again. It is important to understand that the banks are not interested in putting money into the property before it forecloses. The bank doesn't want to put money into a house it doesn't own. 
It doesn't want to invest money by painting or putting carpet or cabinets or these types of things into the house because the homeowner always has the chance of coming back to the house or getting the house out of the foreclosure process. Because of that, banks are really not interested in doing anything with cabinets, flooring, plumbing and electrical fixtures, windows, appliances, or really any other cosmetic items in the pre-sale world. What the banks are interested in and will pay for are lawn maintenance, hazards on the property, boarding windows and pools, trimming trees and shrubs, winterizations, pumping water from basements, mold, roof tarps, patching and repair, lock work, cleaning dirty refrigerators and toilets, and exterior debris to avoid code violations. Just to set the expectation here, most of your money and your bid approvals are going to come from lawn maintenance, trimming trees and shrubs, and in the wintertime from winterizations and snow removal. There is still plenty of money to be made on these other things, but I just wanted to highlight a few of the items that if you focus on these things, you'll be most successful in generating revenue for your business. I wanted to highlight two things here. Although we want to focus on the things that directly make us money, like trimming trees and cutting lawns and doing winterizations and these types of things, it is imperative that we understand that we must document everything at the property. And it's important that you understand the liability that arises from not documenting the full scope of work at each property. Our clients hold us responsible for everything at the property that we report and that we don't report. This job entails much more than just labor-intensive work. It also includes documenting everything that you see on site and reporting it in the way of photos, documentations, and forms. Okay, let's move on to post-sale work. In post-sale work, we are working with the bank and the realtor to prepare the property for sale. A work order called an initial sales clean is issued. Typically in these orders, we're to remove all the debris, remove all the personals, and do a sales clean. We focus on hazards such as making sure the smoke detectors are working, all handrails are in place, there are no trip hazards present, or if there are, they're marked, and that all the light bulbs are working. We perform a lawn maintenance and trim the trees and shrubs, and if a pool is present, it's drained, cleaned, and put in working order. These jobs are usually set at a flat fee and everything's included for a single price, and these flat fees will be provided to you as the work orders are issued. At this point in the foreclosure process, the bank is much more willing to do work, especially in a house that is worth more money. Banks at this point will typically focus on flooring, appliances, cabinets, paint, windows, siding, and other cosmetic items. Banks are also looking to increase curb appeal because as we all know curb appeal is what initially sells the house. So take a good look at mulching and trees and sod and all these types of things and be sure to give good estimates where you're at these properties for the best chance of generating good revenue for your company. So if these are the things that got you into thinking about preservation and REO work, this is it. Post-sale is the place to focus your attention on these items. Even in a post-sale situation, it's important to understand that the banks look at much more information than we do to make their decisions on what to approve or not to approve. It is easy for us to look at a property while we were there and say, if the bank would only put $2,000 of flooring in this house, they could get $10,000 more out of the house. But we have to remember that the banks look at things in a much different way than we look at them. And because of this, Many banks are deciding to leave properties in as-is condition, but at the same time, some banks put a lot of money and effort to put all their properties in better condition than they receive them so that they can get the most value out of them. This is especially true in high market values, so pay close attention to these areas. We want you to be a successful contractor for GCP, because if you're a successful contractor, then we're successful for our clients. So we want to talk about a few things here on how to be a successful contractor for Good Choice Preservation. A successful contractor will understand that going to a property one time per work order is of vital importance. I can't stress enough how important it is that you only go to the property one time per work order. As soon as you go back two or three times you're starting to really lose money and everybody becomes unhappy at that point. I'm going to cover this again but it's important to focus on everything that's important to complete the work order properly. Photos, 
forms, and other documentation that are required. We have to remember that we are not at the property only to complete labor-related work. There is so much more that is involved with completing a job. There's documentation, photographs, and reports, and forms that need to be filled out as well. So to accomplish these goals, you must understand what the true definition of a preservation and REO contractor really is. So here's a definition of a preservation and REO contractor. Here's a list of duties by importance. First of all, you're a documenter. You must document everything that's going on at the property. And those documents must be supported by photographs. We need good, clear, well-lit photographs that show everything that's going on that you see with your own eyes. There are sessions in this training presentation coming up that focus solely on photographs, how to take them, when to take them, the way to set your camera up, the way to work with lighting, macros, and these types of things. You are also an inspector. You need to look at each property with a set of an inspector's eyes, looking for damages, looking for vandalism, looking for theft, looking for everything that the bank wants us to look for at each property. You are also an estimator. You need to know how to eyeball estimate. You need to know how to bid. In sessions coming up, we'll teach you how to give eyeball estimates and proper bids. You're also a computer worker. You need to know how to work with forms and other things of this nature. You need to know how to log in and work with pictures on your computer and how to log into PreserveSoft and work with that piece of software. You are also an office manager. You need to manage your accounting and your workflow and everything that gets done in a day. And Maybe you have employees or subcontractors of these types of things. You have to manage them too. And then lastly, you're the worker in the field. You're the one that actually is going to complete the work, not just the documentation, but the labor-intensive work as well. So we can see that there's many, many things that involve a preservation and REO contractor's responsibilities. So let's put it all together. If you understand what your job is and the requirements of the job, you can and will be a successful vendor for GCP. We must report, document, and photograph everything. And as it pertains to revenue to your company, focus on the things that will be approved and give accurate, fair, and well-documented bids. When it comes to generating revenue to your company, you must understand that a job is not considered complete unless it's documented, photographed, the forms are filled out, and all the labor is performed correctly. So let's work together and partner to make this a solid working relationship. I want to thank you in advance for taking the time to go through these training sessions. I know you will find them valuable and a big help to finding out how to be a successful contractor with Good Choice Preservation. Thank you.